With me today is Dawood Rogers. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Now we're speaking some Arabic here, so, uh, and it's kind of obvious, even though we've got these big beards that we're not a part of ZZ Top or, <laughs> or the Amish, so uh, let's talk about your bridge to faith. Where did you start out? Well, I'm from uh, uh, Eugene, Oregon originally. I was born in Eugene. That's the northwest part of the United States. Pacific Northwest, yeah. Specifically the Pacific. <laughs> Specifically the Pacific. That's easy for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, let, let's ask the question. Now, did you start out as a Muslim? Is that uh, how you started out? Or? No, uh, I, I was raised in a Catholic family, actually, and uh, I grew up, you know, practicing Catholicism, going to church every Sunday with my parents and, and this type of thing. But just as a young man, I um, I started searching, you know, as a rebellious young American youth. I started looking into everything and having your own mind and being rebellious against everything. And so uh, I started, I, didn't, I just didn't feel anything really for the church. So I started searching, you know, I said to myself, like, let's see what everybody else believes in in the world. So... Um, Actually, I was quite, uh, being from Southern Oregon and everything in, the, in that area, uh, it's, it's quite a beautiful environmental place. It's a lot of beautiful mountains and trees, and, and I very much was attached to the environment in the outdoors. And uh, so I started, you know, looking into what was being done to the earth, you know, environmentally, and it really disturbed me. I saw some of the political ramifications of that and such that, you know, corporates corporations were basically exploiting the the reserves of the forests and such and cutting them down and it really disturbed me um, I wanted to live a natural lifestyle and so me and some friends uh, we we were into horses and uh, we used to ride in the mountains and camp out and such and after high school we said why don't we move out onto a piece of land and and live this natural lifestyle that we want to live, an alternative lifestyle, you know, as you would, you know. So uh, I basically became a hippie in a way. I had long hair and, you know, I had a horse. I had no car. Now, did you have this big beard? I had a big beard, yeah. I, I, I had a full beard probably as a senior in high school. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So, uh, and, and that was probably fairly unusual, you know, but I was, I was uh, really different anyway in the way I was thinking and in and, uh, and the way I was heading. Mashallah. So um, we, we uh, moved out onto a piece of land and uh, started living this, uh, you know, natural lifestyle. And, uh, when you're off in solitude like that and there's time for reflection, what, what types of things goes through your mind as regards belief or faith or God or things like that? Does anything come up? Of course, you know, I mean, uh, being in a, a really serene environment where it's silent and it's beautiful, it, it, it reminds you of, of God's creation. And your mind clears up a lot, too. Uh, you you, uh, you kind of start thinking clearly. It's, it's hard to explain, but if you spend a lot of time out in a quiet, solitude kind of a place, you start, you know, hearing more of your own inner voice almost. You start thinking clearly and you start remembering God and I always believed in God I mean it wasn't that I you know absolutely ever stopped believing God I always knew there was a God uh, raised as a Catholic uh, I just didn't quite understand you know the way that they understood it I just didn't you know I needed to find my own path and what I believed in and so I started reading and I started searching you know like I said uh, what what does everybody else in the world believe you know so, you looked at different religions. I looked at different religions. Uh, what, what are some of the religions you, you looked at? Well, being uh, into horses and being uh, close to nature, I was very attracted to the American Indians' religion, actually, you know, of trying to live in peace and harmony with your creator and, you know, look, viewing the, the creation as, as your brother, kind of, and uh, this type of thing. Uh, and I spent some time with some Indian medicine men. We used to go into the sweat lodge and stuff like this. And I, I really was, you know, looking into what they believed in and what were they practicing. And uh, I would pick up anybody's book almost and read it, you know. Some some friends were traveling through the airport in these Hare Krishnas, 
gave a giving out books at the airport. So we would, hey, all right, cool. You know, we would take anybody's book and and read it. You know, I I would take some of these books home, like uh, these things, and 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 look through them and read them and see what does this person believe in? What are they believing? What are they saying? What's right and what's wrong? What's yes and what's no? And sometimes you would end up completely baffled. You you look, you read the book and you think. What did I learn from that? <laughs> I, I don't understand at all what they were talking about. It wasn't clear at all, some of these, some of these teachings. Um, so Buddhism, Hinduism, you know, American Indians religions. I was raised a uh, uh, Catholic, you know, so the Bible and um, Judaism, anybody's religion almost I would look into. I'd listen to gurus and all kinds of stuff. Um, Anybody who thought they were on a spiritual kind of path or something, I was open to listening to. So it turns that there it turns out that there was one um, man amongst us who uh, who gave us a Quran, an English tra simple English translation of a Quran, and um, and he basically just said, "You're looking at all these books, you're reading these different books of religion. Here, read this one, with no real introduction or no real uh, explanation." or no real prophetizing or anything. Just, here's another book. This one's from the Muslims. It's called this, uh, the, the Quran. It's, you know, read this one, you know. And uh, so I started, you know, reading that book. And, and we used to sit around the campfire like this when we were living out in the mountains. I was living in a tent. And we used to discuss the theologies and the ideas and the, the concepts that we were reading about or thinking about or contemplating, you know. And uh, we used to sit around and discuss it, you know, and share the books. You know, hey, let me read that book when you're done. I, I, I got it one for you, and, you know, let's check it out. Uh, so I read the Quran. And unlike so many of the other books I had read, it just was very straightforward and very clear and really touched my heart. When I, you read in the Quran, there's one creator, one God, and he needs to be worshipped alone directly exclusively and that he sent all of these prophets and that those prophets were brothers it, it just I just sat there and nodded my head and went yeah yeah I okay I you know kind of as a skeptical American almost you read these books with let's find out what's wrong with this book rather than what's right almost like let's see if I can find what's wrong with this book that I don't agree with so I started reading and I was like I agree with that I agree with that that makes sense I didn't find things that I disagreed with. I found, of course, some things I didn't understand. Uh, it was just a very sim simplistic kind of a translation, too, of the Quran. A very, very simple and very straightforward. It was actually meant for like students who were had to take an Islamic course in school, and it was just a, you know. <laughs> but uh, it really made sense to me, and I really, I really believed in it. You know, it, it already, as I said, I already believed that there was one God and one Creator. So when I read that, I said, yeah, okay, yeah, I believe in that, you know. And, uh, you know, it says that you should pray, like, for, for instance, in the Quran, it tells us we should pray in three parts of the day, in the beginning, in the middle, and the end, without the understanding or the explanation of the Prophet uh, Muhammad, peace be upon him. He taught us that it's five prayer a day. But if you just read the Quran, it actually mentions three part, parts of the time. And so I thought, oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, you know, you should pray, you know. And uh, I didn't know anything, of course, of the Sunnah at first. And uh, it, it all took years and took time and took exposure. Actually, I didn't know Muslims, never been to a mosque, never been to an Islamic country. And I didn't, I didn't, I was completely wide open, too. And it was a blessing in a way because there was no prejudice in my mind. Islam and Muslims, I was just blink, blink, what's that? You know, I had no idea at all, you know, about it. This was long ago. I, You know, it was about 1982 when I became a Muslim that it was kind of... But that was before all the Muslims were terrorists. Exactly. This was before, like, <laughs> even the West knew anything about, uh, uh, mostly, in, in general, the West knew much about, like, for instance, one of the first things that brought uh, Muslims in the Middle East and Islam into... Western view that I could remember was the Iranian hostage crisis. Okay, you know, no, no, you're talking about Iran. There were Muslims. They were in the United States. There were some hostages taken. I remember about that mm -hmm. thing. How, how, did that have an effect on your thinking? 
I didn't have a negative view of Muslims. I didn't know anything about Muslims, you know. So whoever those guys were and whatever they were doing, it just was, you know, it didn't, it didn't really hit me as, you know, like being Muslims or anything like that. It was a political thing. Oh, oh, so you were not even thinking about, okay, he's an Iranian Muslim. You're saying he's an Iranian politically yeah, uh, politi oriented person. Sure, they must have had an unjust government, so they overthrew uh -huh. their government, and this type of thing was going on in South America. No relation to God or yeah, Islam. I, I wasn't thinking about, uh -huh. you know, really relating it to Muslims or religion. It was political to me. So could that be some of the problems we see today? Uh, partly. I mean, you know, but sometimes people are, are trying to inflict uh, uh, religion into it more than it is sometimes. Sometimes things are political and there is injustice going on in the world and and uh, you know s sometimes people want to uh, twist things around a little bit and say it's going on because of re just their religious beliefs not necessarily because of injustice you know what I mean? So anyway I was wide open to different ideas and, and things like that so when I read the Quran uh, it struck me, and I believe in its basic, clear message of there being one Creator, and uh, specifically that, like Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad, were brothers in the same faith. That the, the, that the religion was one with them, and they 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 teach in essence the same message of worshiping the Creator alone and following the Prophet during that time, his time. So. That that made perfect sense to me. That was really clear, and I was living up in the mountains, and I just tried to, you know, live a good life and be a good person. And and uh, it 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 was many years actually before I actually met Muslims and started getting involved in in in, in actually knowing any. Other okay, Muslims. question, question. Now you said it was many years before you met any Muslims. So I, I want to ask you, were you disappointed? Um. In a way, yes and no. Uh, at at first, you know, you meet uh, people from other countries. They have different cultures and different languages and different mannerisms. So sometimes you just write it off as, oh, you know, they're just different in a way, you know. Maybe because of his culture and his language and his, you know, this and that. Uh, it wasn't until I developed a, an understanding of what is right and wrong and really Islam more that I understood some of the actions of Muslims are really wrong, you know what I mean? I did. I was so ignorant, in other words, at first, that I couldn't tell you that he was a bad Muslim because I didn't know that much in the beginning anyway, um, to know that it was a difference between his culture or his, his religious teachings. Well, this is fascinating. We're getting so much out of it. We're drawing close to the end of our program. What what message do you have for us? What what Maybe you could tell us what happened that put it all together for you and brought you to where you are now, briefly. Well, um, I, I, I'd like to, to mention one really interesting thing that kind of happened was that I used to sit up on the mountain and meditate okay. and pray to God. Okay. And I asked him to guide me, no matter what it was, whatever corner of the earth, whatever it was a far off land or religion or whatever, I wanted to know the truth and I wanted to be guided and I prayed for that before I knew anything about the Quran or anything and I was living in a remote area of Eastern Oregon and somehow Allah guided me brought me a Quran when there was no Muslims around really and, 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 and really no mosque in the area and I read that Quran I believed in it we used to sit by the campfire and discuss it and uh, one time we had a problem in the community. We lived like a commune, a community of people living. And somebody had come to our camp, our little place, and had caused some trouble, drank some alcohol, got really, you know, outrageous behavior, caused some trouble with somebody's girlfriend, and there was a big old scene, and boy, there was almost a big uh, violent fight. And we said, hey, we, we really got to uh, find a way of, of solving these problems. And let's make this book and what it says our guide. Because I was believing in the Quran. And I said, let's make this, a few of us said, let's make this Quran the, the rule for our land. What it says is allowed, we allow. What it says is forbidden, we'll forbid. How about we do that? And when I think back of it, I, it, it makes my hair bristle almost. Because we were trying to establish the, the Islamic law, the Sharia, with, without hardly knowing anything. <laughs> at the time. I wish we have more time. Maybe perhaps another time you'll be on our program with again. And if you want to be guided, 
And this is what happened to me, the same thing. Just say those words, oh God, guide me.